wife, Catherine, is manning the camera, so she's going to be letting me know kind of any comments or questions. Um, but today, I'm doing something I haven't done before, but something I've done personally before, and that is we're going to do some terrarium maintenance. And so, I am a big terrarium person, and this one is probably, how old do you think this one is? Maybe yeah. five or six years old. That? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it's, it's, we've had it for a while. Um, I, we've changed a couple plants out here and there, I know. And so, I just love being able to create sort of this little garden inside this miniaturized garden. And so I used to always joke, um, when I was at the wholesale, this was my therapy time, that this was my time when I made terrariums, you know, for customers or to sell. And, um, you know, one of the things, I know I don't do things conventionally when it comes to terrariums and... I don't know, I kind of just went, I started doing them with my gut, sort of just uh, going on my gut feeling as, you know, with my background in horticulture and watching these plants either thrive or die or whatever over years. And I thought, you know, there's gotta be something different, something better to do. And so, you know, traditionally, when you have a terrarium, this is a small one we're gonna clean up. Um, yeah, see, none of these will have that. Traditionally, you have like gravel or charcoal on the bottom, and then you might have some different layers of different kinds of soil in there. And the thing that I didn't like about it was all those things are important. All those layers are important. They served a purpose, but by layering them, I felt like you created these pockets that I, I don't know, I just didn't like um, because I felt like they created an unhealthy environment in the soil. And so I always start my terrariums with a mix like this. And this is actually an orchid mix. Um, it's a general orchid mix, so you could probably use this on, I won't say every orchid because they're also different, but maybe 80% of the orchids, you could use something like this. And it has different size pine bark, it has some charcoal in it. I always forget, this is like perlite, but it's not. I forget what this little white stone is called. But um, I tried to look it up, but I just can't remember. And so I like this mix as my foundation mix because um, I feel like it puts air into that lower layer of the soil. And that air helps just prevent some rot. It helps, um, you know, that's part of soil in, in the garden is having air inside of that. And I felt like when you have all these different layers in a traditional terrarium uh, format that it just, I don't know, it just felt like it wasn't um, it was too compacted. There wasn't enough air in it. So I started doing this and I had people who were buying terrariums, people who went home and did this and the terrariums were lasting a year, two years, three years, five years. We had terrariums lasting many years. And so I, f I felt good about it. I mean, I was like, okay, I took a good gamble with this, but this mix really works well. And I've toyed with the idea of even selling this mix because it's a really great mix for orchids. I use it in my terrariums. You could use it as layers, like if you have a really big pot and you want to put something like to kind of push the soil up so you don't have to fill it up with soil. Anyway, you can use it for lots of different things. And so that's what I use it for. And um, so we're going to start with the small terrarium first. And so um, this is a, a, a bubble bowl and a glass lid that the Pete Garcia company makes. And it's made out of recycled glass, which was another thing I really liked about it. And you know what, actually, I think I have forgotten something. Let me see, I'll be right back, one second. Well, I don't have them, so we'll just figure it out anyway. What um, did you need? Um, I forgot my scissors. So anyway, it's okay. We'll figure it out. So anyway, in this little terrarium, this terrarium itself is probably at least two years old. And you can see everything in it's got big. And everything in it has started. It's almost when it gets too big, like light can't get through. And this poor terrarium, uh, one of the dogs uh, hit and the lid broke. 
And so we actually had saran wrap over it to kind of keep it um, the moisture inside. And I guess I should just take a minute and kind of talk about that. I prefer having I prefer having a terrarium that's closed because once you get the right amount of moisture in it, then it's almost like no maintenance. I don't have to put water in it. I don't have to worry about how much water's in it. Um, it always has enough water in it. So what I'm doing today is um, wanted to make sure we, we're just going to kind of go over since we've had some people join here and we're doing some terrarium maintenance and this terrarium again is a couple years old and you can see as things start to get big they start to shadow just like they would naturally in a forest and so I want to go in here and like there's a fern I don't know if you can see it here I'll put this down this is a type of fern I want to say this is an autumn fern actually and then this is another one I can't ever seem to remember the name of, but this is, I love this blue green sort of texture to it. And then this is a type of Gisneriad, which the Gisneriad family is gigantic. You may know it, uh, the African violet, African violets are in that family. And so anyway, so here we got this little guy and doing this live. So I'm hoping I don't mess this up too bad, but the big thing is gonna be that we're just going to get in and start kind of removing things that we know we don't want. We're going to edit the stuff we know needs to come out, and then we're going to see what we're left with. And if anybody has any questions, we'll see if Scott can trim and talk at the same time. Now that I have my cutlery. So I'm just going to, because I don't want to be too harsh on the plants, I'm going to push them to the side so I can get my big fat fingers in here. And you can see where the moss has started to grow up the side of the glass. It's trying to get to the light. You can see where some of this light, it's just been so neglected because these plants have just gotten too big. And this little fern here, which is one of my favorites, has gotten choked out a little bit. So I'm literally just pulling these stems and things out. That's from, and I, I should know the name of this just Nariad, but I don't. I bought it like two years ago and there's so many different ones now here's the interesting thing see this leaf here it's got kind of it's partial so i'm going to just trim the, the top part off that is i'm really excited if um if there's any kids out there watching because you you know maybe this would be a great project to do um if you oh, I have these tweezers, I have these great tools I got. These are a syndicate sales item and they come in a pack of four. There's a brush also, which I've lost, but there's a little shovel, a little, little rake, these tweezers. I'm gonna try to use these. So now I've just broken this leaf off by accident, but that's okay. We're trying to get some light into it. Um, so that's all good. Let's see if I can pull some of these. Yeah, the, the plant that is cousins to the African violet is just Nariad is very fragile it's you can just push a leaf the wrong way and the next thing you know you've um, broken a leaf off so i'm trying to not break any of those leaves off even though i think i am oh good i got it this is exciting okay, okay. well someone's asked a question okay hold your thought what type of light should we keep our terrarium in highlight window or low okay so this that is a great question and it is a it is a crucial question when it comes to any house plan, but especially terrariums. I believe they need high light. And the reason why is the sunlight's go, coming through your window, coming through some curtains maybe. I know like we put these in a window that has um, one of those sheer curtains. Uh, so light is filtered even more, but it's gotta get through this too. So it, it's, it's actually got different layers it's gotta penetrate. So I believe a highlight window um, or light source is really ideal. That's a great question because so many times these plants, they just, you know, they're not, I don't know. It's hard to know if a plant is thriving or if a plant is just really slowly dying. And that's why it's really crucial. I'm doing this little one first. So see, I just broke another leaf, but that again, it's okay. Um, it's really crucial because you want light to get down in here. And then I have these little rocks. And you can see if I push these rocks aside, you can see that bark mix that I showed you. 
it's right there. And what I do, because this is important, so when I fill the bottom, I don't know, probably like 70%, maybe 80% of a terrarium with this mix, I'll put some in this lid. Um, when I go to plant the plant, this little piece of charcoal, I still leave the root ball and I'll show you this. I'm going to use in the next terrarium I do, I got this little guy I'm going to plant in there. But I still use this root ball. Like in this case, this is an Apenthes, uh, which is a type of carnivorous plant, which I'm really excited about the next terrarium. So I hope you stay tuned. Um, and it's a type of sphagnum moss that's just that it's growing in. And so I will literally take that plant and put it right in the bark, right in this mix. I just make a little hole, just like you would soil, put it in there put it, pack it in around it, so that way there's some pressure. Okay, so this little Gisneriad, it is very happy in the terrarium. It likes high humidity. What I wanna show you, if you can see, it's getting ready to bloom. This little guy has bloomed inside this terrarium like four times. And so it goes through a cycle, and it will even, I mean, it'll have three or four flowers. It'll even go to seed sometimes. And one of these days, I wish the seed would germinate. But I know the soil, this soil that I've got in here is not ideal for that. All right, so now one thing that needs to be thinned out a little bit is this autumn fern over here. And so first, I'm going to start with trying to find, a lot of times, you know, we're trying to miniaturize things. And this autumn ferns can get to be huge. I mean, as big as this entire little area. They get quite large. And so I'm going to go in here, and this leaf has some wear and tear on it. It may be an older leaf. I'm going to just go into the base and cut that and pull that whole leaf out. And you can see where it's shown some signs that maybe it didn't get enough light, or maybe it was up against the glass, and maybe it got a little too hot. And so, which that doesn't usually happen, but here, here's the little piece. So I'm just thinning this guy out. And this is what I love about autumn ferns, too, is they naturally have a little bit of color to them. Now, see this huge leaf here? It's not huge, but it's bigger. I'm gonna go ahead and just take that whole leaf out because we're trying to get light into this thing. Here's another one. We're gonna pull this leaf out. Well, you've had several people just join recently if you wanna let okay. people know what you're doing. So what I'm doing today is some, this is sort of my hobbies that I really enjoy and that is doing terrariums. And you can always see people do terrariums and they always look great, you know, like when you get them done, but then do they live? How long do they live? How do you maintain them? And so these are trims that I've had for years that I just either kind of go in and do what I'm doing now. It's sort of a grooming thing. So I'm trying to show people how to groom um, and, and kind of clean it up a little bit because that's part of having a terrarium. I, I love the fact that most of the time these are so low maintenance. Now, if I had some fresh moss, I might replace this moss here because you can see, you can see where this fern is trying to send out some shoots. I don't know if you can see that, but that moss is half dead. So I'm not real thrilled about that. So I may pull this out. Let me just pull this out. Well, Florology Flowers asked, do you keep them in a shady spot? No, I don't. Um, when it comes to light, I, I do believe that light is really important. And even though that in nature, I'm kind of scraping some of this moss off. In nature, ferns might naturally occur in a shady spot. You have to remember outdoors, the only filtration for light is the canopy of trees. So in your house, when you're gonna have it, you have all these extra layers of, I went out into the woods here and got some little moss. So I'm gonna put this little bit of sheet moss right there. I think that might actually help that fern because it won't be quite so heavy right up there against it. But no, high light. You wanna keep your ferns in really high light. Oh look, here's, this looks like a parsley or some kind of seed from the garden that came with the moss. Okay, so that is really about all I'm gonna do with this one because it's so small that I don't want to put another plant in there um, another thing I like to do, now this particular terrarium was a little low on water, and I'm going to show you the difference, um, in my opinion, on, on that. So I'm going to add a little water. I've just disturbed some of the roots, trying to clean it up. And I just take a misting bottle. This is a heavy-duty one. Normally the one I use is not. I'll just probably turn the nozzle. Yeah, that's a good idea. 
wrong way. That's a little better. So what I'll do is I'll come in here and just kind of clean the glass by misting it down a little bit. And sometimes just doing that is actually enough water. It's actually enough water. Um, so here's a little piece of paper towel. And I'm gonna come in here really carefully because I don't want to break this just snare yet anymore. The other thing is, is by keeping the glass clean on the outside, you know, sometimes they get dusty. You know, I know that we all dust our houses and everything, but you just don't sometimes think of the terrarium. And so, but having clean glass is also a big deal. And so every now and then I'll just take the glass or take the lid. And this guy is not super fancy, but he, but I really designed this whole terrarium for that just nariad in there because I knew they liked the humidity. And there. Now, right now, because I've cleaned the glass, it's real clear. And it's sometimes hard to tell. You can see the fresh moss I put in there kind of helped to green it up. You know, this is not a fabulous example. It's not my favorite terrarium, but it's one that I, uh, again, because I love that just nariad that I did just for that. This is one that I do like a little bit more. Let me show you this. Before you take the lid off, you yeah. can see the moisture. Yeah, so sometimes people don't like to have the condensation in a terrarium like this because you don't get to see inside of it. But different times of the day, it'll be more cloudy than others. But this is usually a good sign that there's probably enough moisture. So as it heats up, that moisture comes on the glass. You see this condensation. Then as it builds up, you can almost see the drops of water, like in the lid. And then that just drops back down in there. And so that's a good sign that there's a good balance. Now I'm gonna take out this little like birdhouse so you can see, but you can see inside there. So I have a little strawberry begonia. Yeah, it's blooming over there. What? Or whatever that, that one is in the corner that's like a... Oh yeah. So there's the ficus. And then this is the nepenthes, or the, it's that hanging kind of pitcher plant. You can see the little pitchers. It's happy. It's really happy in here. And so this has got a good amount of moisture. Everything is great. We've had some rocks. You can also see, here, I'll put it down on the table so you can see better. You can also see, there's my bark. And this bark, again, it has charcoal in it, which helps um, sort of purify the air, purify the water. It helps absorb different toxins and things. The bark, because it's so chunky, it creates a lot of... Um, air and that air is great because then bacteria can't grow so this is another one of these nepenthes and this one in here is a little bit older uh, i've had this one longer than this one but this little guy i've kind of been babying and i've actually put him i have kind of a little terrarium hospital where sometimes i'll put these guys in and let them kind of acclimate or see how they're going to do um, this was a rescue and you can see that while it was in the little hospital you can see that it's starting to put on new growth and the new growth that'll end up becoming one of these little pitchers. So I think it's pretty cool. So before I put him in here, cause I've got a spot, there used to be a bigger plant that was in here that just got to be so big that it just sort of outgrew the container. So I had to remove it and I've been waiting to replace it. And here again, we've got with the moisture on the side, this moss really likes it in here and it's, it's trying to grow up the side. These little mushrooms are fake. They're just little ceramic mushrooms. I'm gonna clean those guys up too. But we're just doing maintenance here. So we're just really trying to, and here's this ficus. That's ficus, I guess, repens. It's a ground covered one that like, likes to attach to walls. Here's where it was climbing up. This particular, I don't know if you can see it here. I'll put it back down. This little one, this branch was growing up the glass and I said, no, I don't want you to grow up the glass. So I found this rock and I kind of put it, put it down to hold it down so it could root into the medium. Um, here's another one that's trying to root. I don't know if you can see it. It's got little roots here coming out. So anyway, but right now we're cleaning. So let me get in here. We've got, you know, everybody has, you know, this is one of the things it's kind of like aquariums that people don't like necessarily about having terrariums is, is that there's maintenance. 
But the one thing I want to say about that is I haven't done maintenance on this terrarium in maybe a year. So while we're in quarantine, it's a good time to catch up on these things. So it's not like it's a high maintenance thing. And you see the moisture and the condensation on the side of the glass. It's, it's, it's a good thing because it's showing all these plants are getting the moisture they need. If it was too heavy, if there was too much water, you would sometimes see like in the bottom part where it was just, there'd be like an inch of water. And that's not necessarily a, a good situation. So I want to pull some of these bigger stones out, kind of clean them off a little bit. And I'm going to try to get into to this Nepenthes, which is a little bit tricky. There's some leaves that have come off. And pull some of these leaves off. Now, Nepenthes, I don't know if you guys know what that is or not. But it's a carnivorous plant. And so they do eat bugs. And the bugs climb into those pitchers. That's too hard. I'm going to have to get in there and cut that. See, it's just a leaf that was down low. It's not unhealthy. It just isn't getting light and didn't eat anymore. Here's some, this is some lichen that was in the moss. And I'm not going to really disrupt this Nepenthes too much. It's so happy. I don't really want to mess with it. I just want to clean it up and get, get it healthy with getting some of these leaves off. If anybody has any questions, I can do this and talk. And here's, so this little strawberry begonia, those are great for terrariums. I love them just because they tend to be naturally small leaved and they, um, they're just, they look great. They just, it kind of adds to sort of this woodland feel. You know, ideally, if we weren't in quarantine, I would probably go to the store and try to get a little fern to put in here because I just love the texture of that fern leaf. I'm cutting these little leaves off because I don't want to disrupt. And these are just leaves that when the plant was maybe a little bit bigger or the other plant was in here was very overpowering. Um, they probably didn't get light. So if I go to pull some of these leaves, see it's not really just pulling off. And so I'm, I'm gonna go in there and trim this. You can see some leaves up underneath there maybe. I don't know, are y'all able to see everything okay? You know, between the glass being fogged up and... But these little guys are happy. I mean, this guy came from, from the mama here. So they do spread. You can even see like down in here where it's trying to, you know, new babies are trying to come up. And so I think it's just kind of neat. In fact, curious what that is. Sometimes things go to seed, which I think is neat too. All right, so I think we've cleaned up pretty much as much of this as we can clean up. So someone has asked, how often do you mist it? Okay, that's a great question because the one thing, the downside and the upside of terrariums is, is managing their amount of fluid in it, the water content. Because if you have an open terrarium, like if I didn't have a lid on this, the thing um, to watch for, this, that'd be great for succulents because you don't want to overwater them. In this case, these plants love moisture. And so what I do is when I'm creating a terrarium, I'll mist down the sides of it. I may add a couple tablespoons of water and then I add the lid. And so we're gonna clean all this, but we add the lid back on. And if the next day you start to see condensation on the glass, then I'm not gonna add any more water because it's probably got either enough or too much. So you might say, well, how, what do I do if I put too much in? Well, then you leave the lid off because if the lid's off, you'll have evaporation that naturally occurs and eventually that will, that will, that will equal out. And then you just have to watch either the bottom of your terrain to make sure there's not too much water in it, or you'll notice that some things start to dry out on the surface. But then I'd put the lid back on. Before I add any more water, I'd put the lid back on, see if the condensation builds up, see if there's enough moisture, and then go from there. Because overwatering a terrarium is, is really hard. I will say that that's the other thing I love about terrariums that are enclosed, is you don't have to water them. They really are self-contained. 
Um, okay, so I've got to show you this because we're outside. Okay, it's it's I don't know what it is, 65, 70 degrees. Um, well, there's a thermometer. It it's feels 60, fabulous outside. It, it does feel. It's 60 degrees. I see the thermometer on the wall of it. So just in the short time since I've closed this guy up, do you see where the condensation has already started? So it's already starting to build up in there, which that's why I didn't want to add a lot of water because it really was already good. And this is the same for this. So I am going to clean this glass just a little bit because when I get ready, I don't, I know I'm going to end up making a mess anyway. Um, but I'm going to start, I'm going to try to push these rocks aside. People are loving your tools. The cute little tools. Syndicate Sales makes, they have, a lot, in fact, they sell a lot of glass that can be used for terrariums. And I got, and we're gonna use their, so I've been using, let's, let me get rid of the paper towel. They're tweezers, which they're a little big. Like huh? There you go. trying to get them. Yeah, they're a little big, but, um, you know, these are really designed, especially if you can't get your hands in the terrariums, but to help move things around. I was using them to do more detailed work, but look at this little shovel. I mean, if you've got kids, and you want to do terrariums or even if you want to do them because i'm like a big kid i'm getting ready to use them um they're great and so i'm just trying to move the use them to move some of these little rocks apart because i'm trying to make a hole for that new nepenthes okay so now the shovel well i think bringing up the children is important especially now that school's out it's a great opportunity to teach kids about plants and kind of the ecosystem that happens on the inside. Yeah, and that's a, I mean, that's the one thing about terrariums that I think I always loved is you're creating this little mini ecosystem. And it's just like it is in the world, you know, with rainforests and everything like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna clean this plant up a little bit because I, I it's gonna be really hard to clean up once I put it in and plant it. So I'm gonna come, I've taken it out of the pot there's a there's some leaves, lower leaves. This this plant when I rescued it um, had gotten too dry, and so when I went to put it in, I'm just going to trim this leaf because it's just not pretty, and hope and I honestly don't know that might turn brown and that might not be a good thing to do, but it's easier to do now and then I can go in and fix it later. But now it looks really healthy, and you can see this new growth here. Um, I. I don't know if I'm gonna be brave enough to show you my nasty little terrarium hospital, but um, we'll put these in something and let them kind of recover because these plants, especially Nepenthes, carnivorous plants love it wet, um, like pitcher plants or bog plants and um, sundews. These are all bog plants. They love high humidity, they love moisture. And so they really love to be in terrariums. If, if the scale is right because some some of these things will get big in fact i think this is a miniature variety but in nature these there are varieties that have little pictures on them that are like this big so obviously that's not a terrarium variety so i made a little hole in my bark i'm not going to add any more then i'm going to take this ball you can see the root ball this is going to be a little challenging Actually, I didn't make it deep enough, which happens a lot with me because it it's almost like I should have just taken these stones out of here first. In fact, let me take this big one out. We're going to push this this way. Because I don't want it to be too deep, but I also don't want it to sit up above. It doesn't need that. Some plants that rot easy do need that, but Nepenthes aren't one of them. Now, I want to try to angle him in here so that way his neck, so he's not growing up, but he's kind of leaning over a little bit. Okay, so there he is. Okay, I'm going to try to push this bark back up against him. And I'm going to clean off my begonia over here that I buried a little bit. And I love the way this ficus kind of just hugs the ground. It's nice to have that little bit of green. So I don't know if you can see now, but it's almost the same size as this older one. So the scale is really good. 
But do you, I don't know if you can see. I really want, especially if you got kids. Okay, there. I can see that. See the little picture? So bugs crawl in those things and then they get digested because they can't get back out. And so because I was kind of concerned, I went out into the woods and I grabbed a piece of moss and I would not normally recommend this. I'm doing something that is not ideal. I'm pulling some, I'm weeding, weeding my moss because you don't know what kind of bugs you're introducing into a closed environment like this that could wreak havoc. But I've been looking at it. It's been sitting on my table here for a minute and I don't really see very much activity. So I'm gonna use this moss that we got from the woods because if there are some little critters in here, they might feed my plants. Does that sound barbaric? So I'm gonna put that in here. Oh my God. So this is from the plant that was in there. It's a little baby peperomia. That's pretty cool. That's the thing with these ecosystems, you can have all kinds of life that grows in here. And especially if you have young ones or kids and you're trying to teach about plants and you're trying to teach about ecosystems, um, especially while you know homeschooling is going on. I have to admit, my wife and I, We've always been homeschoolers, so this is nothing new for us. And so maybe that's one reason why I love doing things like this for kids. Okay, so I don't want to put much moisture in here because again, it was like perfect. So I'm just really gonna just briefly kind of hose down the sides, just a little bit. I mean, really little bit. And another, I'll show you another trick that you can do and the downside of what I'm doing also, this is why I didn't mind, I knew I was gonna do this because I'm cleaning it, is I'm removing moisture, aren't I? I mean, by using this paper towel and wiping down the glass, I'm actually taking moisture out of the terrarium. And so I'm gonna watch this terrarium over the next few days to make sure that I see some condensation because that's gonna tell me, oh, good. It is still have plenty of moisture in there. If it doesn't have condensation, then I'm gonna be a little worried. Oh, this is a great side view of this carnivorous plant. Again, it's called an Apenthes. Trying to be gentle, I don't wanna break it. I see some spots here. With that being a brand new plant with a decent size bottom to it, no pun intended there. <laughs> Are you going to water that in at all or just rely on your misting? Well, I had already watered the plant. That's a really great question. And so when it was in this little pot, it already, it was pretty wet. And so normally when you go to plant something, I would say, yes, absolutely you need to water it. And if this was a brand new terrarium that I had just planted, I would water it a little bit heavier. Now I'm going to clean this lid. I'm going to go back and finish cleaning this later but let me clean this lid a little bit. Again, I'm removing moisture, which does make me a tad bit nervous, but the next couple days, what I'm looking for is condensation. And if there is enough. So if I put, I'm gonna go back and re-clean all this later, but for time. So now you see it, that's gonna keep the moisture in. If I felt like, well, gosh, it does seem to be a little heavy on the moisture side. Um, there's heavy condensation, but maybe not enough that I want to take the whole lid off. You can just crack the lid and it will still, this will still capture some condensation, but not as much. And it will allow it to vent and allow it to air. And sometimes that's kind of a good alternative, but not more than a day or two. I wouldn't want to do that. Actually, I'd probably do it for maybe two days and then I put the lid back on and then I'm looking for condensation again. Well, Southern Bella Blooms just ask any advice on soil to use for starting a new terrarium. Yes. So traditionally people say to put gravel in the bottom, put some char or charcoal or a mixture because that helps keep the water from the soil just sitting in the water. 
Um, if you guys are interested, I can look into. This is the mix I use for my terrariums. I don't use, I don't do the layer system. I use this mix. And I literally, I don't know if you can see it because these terrariums are older and over time it does break down. You can see where, I don't know if you can see or not. No, you can't. Yeah, it's really like, but that bark is in there and it's like 80% bark. And then I take that root ball that was in this pot and I leave that soil on there. Now, if it's a plant I think is going to be vigorous, I might add a little more soil into the hole that I'm planting it in. But when I use this mix, I don't actually, you know, fill it with soil because I feel like it gets so wet and heavy in this humid environment that it's too heavy. And, um, but you can see, I mean, I just added this Nepenthes, but everything else in here has been in here for at least two years and they don't and I'll go in and I'll prune them up a little bit or I'll or they naturally thin out and so you might think well gosh those plants should be getting bigger well I think this is a miniature variety of Nepenthe so it's not a big one and the begonias are again also not a big variety and I know that this ficus uh, this climbing ficus you know I've had to prune it a few times because it wants to grow up the glass um, and that's why I added that rock earlier. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and add some of this back in here. And I had that rock to hold that vine down because I wanted it to climb to other parts of the garden. Can you share what else is in your mix other than bark? Yeah. So in this, it has a different grades of bark, but it also has this little white stone. And I think of it as like perlite, but I know it's not perlite. So if any of y'all out there know what this is called because you're big into terrariums, let me know. I always forget what it's called. Um, and then it has, it actually has charcoal, but it's, it's good size charcoal. And like I said before, this mix is, is normally used for orchids. And when I saw it, and I've been using this mix for my terrariums, I don't even know, maybe six, seven, eight years, a long time I've been using this mix. And I've had people have had trams last one and two years. Usually they either get tired of them or they ignore them or they get so overgrown they don't know what to do with them. But I used to plant a lot of trams that people use for corporate gifts and different things. And they all love, I mean, the trams lasted and, and the mix seems to really work well. So now I'm gonna add my little decorative mushrooms just to kind of add a little scale makes the little Nepenthes look bigger. Put one over here. I have this little birdhouse, but I'm not gonna put him back in because it's just, sometimes these things don't really hold up well in moisture just because. And I'm really hoping that when I introduce that moss from the, from the garden that Maybe there's a couple little critters in there that'll feed my Nepenthes. Now I see there's some dirt. Now that's another thing that I do like to use water for is to kind of wash off the leaves a little bit. And I'm not too, I mean really, I'm not just doing a full spray. I'm just kind of doing a light spray. Because again, I don't want to add too much moisture to this. But because I keep removing it with the paper towel, I sort of, Here's an interesting question. Yeah. So she said, um, just good old charcoal from our fire pit. I would say no, because a lot of times it's dusty and um, you want to use what they call activated charcoal. And it's been designed to be absorbent. And I think it's been clean. And a lot of times I would rinse it off with like distilled water. You could probably use tap water, but the chlorine, it'll absorb chlorine. So I would probably just use activate. You can get it at an aquarium store. You can get it now at a lot of nurseries. A lot of the mixes have it in it now, um, just because it is really good at absorbing toxins and other things. I'm gonna have to really clean the outside of this because these terrariums live in my house where my cats like to hang out, look out the window, and my dogs. And so, anyway. well, We usually clean it with alcohol instead of something like a glass cleaner. Right. Yeah, I mean, and sometimes just water and a little bit of elbow grease. I mean, it doesn't have to be complicated, but um, 
I'm so happy for this new little Nepenthes to be in here. And so that's pretty much it. And so I'm excited to see both of these guys steaming up a little bit. And I know that, I'll just show, if y'all wanna see a picture of this little guy Bloom, I can post that later when it does in a few weeks. But that's really it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, it was fun for me. I know sometimes just getting my hands in the dirt and playing in the garden. I hate to say playing because it really is working, but um, it's very therapeutic and I know it kind of gets your mind off other things that are going on. So I hope everybody's being safe. Um, just to let everybody know, if you have any other questions, go ahead and ask, but um, we just released an awesome episode with, with Steve Moore, Sinclair Moore on the podcast. Uh, so if you listen on any of the podcast apps, you can get it. We also, um, last night loaded a live version of it on YouTube so you can see it there and uh, Yeah, so that's the very first time we've done that um, We had an incredible if you want to learn more about the different varieties of Fritillaria We just have a new blog post that released this weekend and it has beautiful pictures from um, Different people and just different growers and so also some that I've taken over the years and so anyway, it's a good way to learn um, Yeah, so where do you find it? If you go to theflowerpodcast.com, you'll see a menu bar. And if you've never been there, you really should go to theflowerpodcast.com. It has so many, you, first of all, you can see all the guests. And sometimes people don't realize that we've had over 70, almost 80 guests on the Flower Podcast. And so it's really, you can see all the different people and learn about them. And you can even listen to the episodes right there on the website. So from your phone or your laptop, wherever you can listen. Um, but we also have our blog posts there, and even though we're still we're new at blogging, uh, we're trying to do more of it. Um, we have, we really do put a lot of heart and soul into each post, so it's not just some pictures and a couple paragraphs, but it's it does get into a little depth on some things. On the fritillaria, it's especially you just see all these different varieties, some of which I didn't even know about. So it was kind of cool to learn about some new flowers that I love so much. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, tomorrow we're going to be live at 10 30 with um odessa begay she did a wonderful uh, book called the language of flowers and she's an artist and it's really incredible the information she has in this book and then on friday we're doing at 10 o'clock um a with harmony harvest we're going to be with jessica and stephanie and talk about you know their growing operation and the effects of the covid 19 virus and also them shipping because i've had a lot of people ask about how do you learn how to ship? Well, they've putting together some resources that I think would be awesome for that. So yeah, um, anything else? All right, well, thank you so much everybody for tuning in. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and just kind of hanging out. Um, it's fun, thank you for joining me while I do my, my plant therapy, my horticultural therapy. So y'all be safe and take care.